Good morning, folks. Welcome to Central Church. Uh, as always, a reminder that this is a Jesus church where everyone is welcome, where no one is perfect, and where everyone is loved. Communion Sunday uh, today. Um, we have a little something for you as you walked in for those who are in church today. Of course, uh, at home, you're going to have all your stuff ready for yourself. Uh, thank you again for everyone who has been so gracious and so faithful in, in the Walk the Extra Mile for Lesotho. It's been wonderful. The folks still have until this Saturday uh, to, to do their last little bit of walk and get their money coming in. We want the money on the 8th of November. We're, we're aiming for 5000 Usually, this would be a $10,000 uh, event with all the running that takes place. Now, I'm telling you something. If we are faithful, God is more than faithful. Because right now, I think we are going to be so close. I'm not putting something on you. I'm just saying what I'm seeing right now. We're going to be so close to that $10,000, if not on the $10,000. That's how amazing God is when we're doing his work. As you said last week, Peter, if God said do this, we do it, he'll take care of it. So thank you again for all of those of you who are doing that. The interns have done their work. We thank you very much for all those young interns who worked so hard over the summer, difficult times. Thanks for your time and for the gifts that you shared with us. This week, session management on Monday at 4 o'clock, and then session meeting, the leadership meeting on Wednesday at 7.30. We say that because we want you to pray for us, because we need your prayers. Again, if you wanted to put a name on the clipboard for praying, there's a virtual clipboard, virtual clipboard at cpcmail.ca. Send us an email. It will be there. You can even do it now if you have your phone with you. Alexander can still get it to me at some stage. We're continuing to pray for Sally, uh, went for more tests and waiting for results on that. Uh, maybe surgery, maybe not. That's, that's the big question right now. We continue to pray for her. Um, uh, someone asked us to pray for her daughter who is struggling with cancer. Uh, didn't want me to mention the name, but that's fine. God knows exactly who that is. Um, John Duncan went for his surgery. We're praying for Don for recovery. Um, we're praying for Roberta Dedman. She had a heart attack and a stroke, and she's actually the caregiver for Susan. So that's, that's really, really tough for them. Uh, it's continuing to pray for Kay. She's, she's signed the papers, but she doesn't have a date for her hip surgery yet. So we're continuing to pray for her. And um, I think it's really important that we pray for our friends down south. Uh, in this week as they have to make huge decisions and decisions that they make down south will always impact up north as well So if we could please pray for them uh, as well Those are all the announcements. Let's bow our heads in prayer Father God Our joy to be in this place together or in front of our screens uh, Because Lord as we do this as we get together it is to worship you it's to come into your Holy Presence and experience, Lord, how you, in these moments, are going to speak into our lives. I'm excited, Lord, because in this morning from your scripture, you, you are talking about promises that you make to us, your children, as we live and settle in that land that we call our, call our promised land. And Lord, to know that you promise that you will be there and with us. What a gift. And because of that, we're also allowed to pray. And you heard all the names that we mentioned this morning, Lord. Each one of them in their own way, needing you and needing your presence and your hand upon them. And we thank you, Lord, that you do that. We thank you that you take care of all of your people. We pray for a world that is upside down and downside up with this COVID-19. We pray for the United States, as in this week, they have to go to the polls and have to vote on a leader for the next four years. And pray that, Lord, in your wisdom and in your guidance, you will guide them. We pray for our own leaders that need to, in this time, stand up and, and walk 
and show the way and make good decisions. Will you guide their decisions also for us and for our well-being and for the well-being of this place that we call Canada? Thank you that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. They went with songs to the battle. They were young. Straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end, against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
So today we come to the end of our series called Breaking Strongholds. A series in which we have seen how, how God has moved us from the wilderness, that empty place, that, that place of need, that place of rebellion, that place of turning your backs on God, struggling without God, how God moved us from that wilderness into the promised land. That place where God lets us be that person that God intended us to be. Where we become that person that God intended us to be. Where God gives freely all the gifts that God has intended from the beginning for us. And to end the series today, I want to leave you with two promises and, and I'm excited about this when I was writing this and and when I was studying this again yesterday so exciting two promises that God makes to each one of us as we settle in our own promised land and start living there your place where you are who God wants you to be created you to be so that when those difficult, hard times come, that you will have something, no, that you will have someone to hold on to. So promise number one, God says, in your promised land, I will always be with you and stay with you. First promise. I will be with you and I will stay with you. So, so let me take you back to the beginning to explain this. Right in the beginning where we started seven, eight weeks ago with this series. When God calls Joshua to lead the people into the promised land, a land that is filled with a violent, bloodthirsty nation, Joshua with an army that has not really experienced this kind of stuff, and Joshua whose leadership had not yet been proven, God doesn't just say, well, Joshua, you go try this and see what happens. God makes Joshua a promise. A promise that says, I will be with you, and because I'm with you, this land will be yours, and you will have the victory. And I want to take you back to that in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. The Lord said to Joshua, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. It's as if the Lord is saying to Joshua, yes, the walls of Jericho are going to be really thick. That's true. But you have me. Yes, the Ammonite armies have home field advantage. That's true. But you have me. Yes, your enemy has chariots and they have artillery. That's true. But you have me. And then, just to, to underline that, there's a last little line. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. In this promised land, whatever there might be, I will always be with you. And my friends, that's the promise that God makes you and me today. And you're saying, whoa, stop. You can't just take Old Testament, put it right onto us. Okay? Then let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Did you have that text? Okay. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. The writer of the book of Hebrews writing to a New Testament congregation in his last little piece of his message saying goodbye to them, makes this quote. Hebrews 13, verse 5. For God has said, I will never 
leave you. I will never abandon you, forsake you. So let us be bold, and I'm going to talk about that next week. Let us be bold then and say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? What can anyone do to me? And you're saying, yeah, right. They can lie to me. They can hurt me. They can deceive me. They can bully me. They can be mean to me. They can be rude to me. Yeah, yeah, but did you read the line right? When the Lord is my helper, what can anyone do to me? When the Lord says, I'm going to be with you, what can anyone do to me if God says, I am your helper? Because here's the coolest thing of all of this, and all of you need to go study Greek, but don't. I'll, I'll continue teaching you. Because the most beautiful word, and there's a, a slide for this, Ted. I think it works, but it, I don't need the slide. I know it in any case. The, the Greek word for helper is the word boetheo. It's made up of two words. The word boe, which means to shout or to cry, it was initially called a war cry. It was a boe. You actually know that English word. Boisterous. Boe. Loud, shouting. And the th second word, theo, not theos like in God, but theo as in running. So, so hear this. When you need help and God is your helper, it says this. When God hears your call for help, God comes running with a shout, with a war cry. Don't be afraid. I'm there. I'm with you. I'm always going to be there. Don't be scared of that. I'm with you. I'm there for you. Don't worry about that. I heard you. I'm coming. I'm running to be with you always. And I'm coming with my war cry because I'm going to be there for you and help you and protect you and take care of you because I will be with you always. That's God's promise for you, for me, for each one of his children that he takes into this promised land. If the Lord is my helper, why will I be afraid? Because what can anyone do to me when God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you first promise make that your own proclaim that take that into your life but hold on second promise goes with this not only does god promise that when we go into the promised land that he will always be there but god also makes this promise that he will always you can take that one off thanks ted that, that he will always fight for us when he leads them into the promised land through Joshua, God fights for them because God doesn't just want them to try and survive in the promised land. He wants them to live there and to prosper there and, and to be the best that they can and thrive in this promised land. So God says, I will fight for you. So that's the second promise. And I want to take you to the second last chapter of Joshua. To see that. Joshua chapter 23. I'm going to read verse 1 to 3 first. After a long time had passed. So this is Joshua's farewell speech uh, to the people. They've settled in the land now. The land has been uh, dis, uh, divided between them. So Joshua is saying goodbye. They're on their own now. After a long time had passed, and the Lord had given Israel rest, the book of Hebrews loves that word, rest from all their enemies around them, Joshua, by then a very old man, summoned all Israel, their leaders, their elders, their leaders, their judges and officials, and said to them, I'm very old. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all these nations for your sake. It was the Lord, or God, who fought for you. So, 
Joshua saying goodbye. At this stage, he's approximately 110 years old. And by the way, we always talk about Joshua as this very young man that led them. Where did we get that? How old do you think Joshua was when he was leading them into the promised land? At least 60. Because he was one of the spies at Kadesh. And then 40 years in the desert. So he would have been at least 20 years old to be a spy. So 40 plus 20 gives you at least 60. He was no such thing as a young man. He was a, well, I'm 62. I'm a young man. Yeah. We call that a young man. By this time, he's around, he's around 110 years old. Saying goodbye. And then Joshua says, you yourselves have seen everything that the Lord your God has done for you. You saw the Jordan River open. You saw the walls of Jericho fall. You saw the sun and moon stand still. You saw how God divided this land amongst you. You are eating the fruit of a land that you did not plow or plant. And you are eating all of that. And all of that happened because of one thing. Because God fought for you. And that's what God does in the promised land. That's the story of the book of Joshua from beginning to end. God, God claims, God gives, and God defends. And for us, God claims, God gives, and God defends. I will fight for you. Listen how he goes on, verse 9. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations, to this day, no one has been able to withstand you. Listen to this. I love this. One of you routes a thousand. Now, that word routes is, is a huge word. Can I translate that in proper English? Something like chases out or defeats or overpowers. One of you defeats a thousand. Why? Because the Lord, your God, fights for you, just as he promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. I love this image. Think of yourself, see this image for a second. So here's one Hebrew soldier. There's a thousand enemy soldiers coming at him. And the moment this soldier takes out his sword, all 1,000 of them stop in their tracks, turn around, and scatter. Because one of you overpowers, overcomes a 1,000 enemy soldiers. Think of your picture, my friends. And then draw that sword. And then you say to all those strongholds that try and attack you, you stand no chance because God fights for me. Get away from me. You have no say over my life anymore. You can't touch me because one will rout a thousand because the Lord fights for you. Will you own that? for your own life when those thoughts come when those strongholds come when they try and attack you will you stand on the sword of the word of the lord and say i stand with the lord and here is my sword get ye away from me because i need to show you what happens if the lord fights for you they, they, they put up a little spreadsheet in chapter 12 of, of the kings that they, that they fought against. And this is the coolest little spreadsheet that you will ever see. I'm not going to read the whole one because it's like a spreadsheet. It's kind of yawn at the end. Just a, just a little bit to give you an idea. So chapter 12, verse 9, talks about the kings that they fought against and defeated. The king of Jericho, one. The king of Ai near Bethel, one. The king of Jerusalem, one. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Jarmuth, one. The king of Lachish, one. The king of Eglon, one. The king of Gezer, one. And so it goes on and on and on. And the list ends with 31 kings. And when they add this up, 
it comes down to this. God, 31, the enemy, zero. When God fights for us, it's 31, zero. And that's what God does for us in Jesus Christ. So when that fear comes, one. When that stronghold of anger comes, one. When that stronghold of deceit comes, one. When that stronghold of whatever comes, one, 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 one. Because God is fighting for me and my enemy is defeated over and over and over. And the victories are this and the defeats against us are zero. Because God fights for us. That's why God brings us into the promised land. With a promise to be with you and to fight for you. And God kept that promise when God came into this world in Jesus Christ. In that moment when the Lord Jesus went into the wilderness. Interesting word. And faced the devil. He fought for your peace and for my peace so that when that thing comes against me and wants to push me back into the wilderness, I can say to him, one, you're done. When he stood up for every neglected person, for every marginalized person, he stood up for you, for me, for the little ones in this world and fought for them. When he died on that cross on Calvary, he fought for your salvation and my salvation. And nothing in this world can ever take that away. When he gave his Holy Spirit into this world to come take his place in your life and in my life, it is God fighting for me, for you, for our lives every day day. That, my friends, is our inheritance as we move into the promised land. So break those strongholds. Amen. This is the table of the Lord, and welcome to the table of the Lord. The signs of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus, the signs of that same promise. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. For when I go to my Father, I will send another one just like me, the Holy Spirit, to live in you. The signs that say, I will fight for you because as you eat and as you drink, it is a reminder that I died for you. And if I died for you, I will never leave you alone to do these things in this world alone. I will be there for you. So welcome to the table of the Lord. Will you pray with me? And as part of the prayer, we are going to say the Apostles' Creed. The words will come on the screen. And I invite you to say those words with me as we pray together. Our Father, in these moments, we thank you for these beautiful signs. Bread and wine. Maybe just a small piece of wafer in my hand and a little cup. But it is so much bigger than that. Because these symbols remind us of you, Lord Jesus. 
who left your kingdom in heaven to come walk the dirt streets of this earth. Who went from holding the stars in your hands to clutching at Mary's finger. From creating this beautiful world to opening your arms and being nailed to a cross and giving your blood to make us brand new. Thank you that as we break the bread and share the wine, we are reminded of you and your promises, but also the cost. So in these moments, Lord, we also want to profess our faith and we say the following words. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On the night that the Lord Jesus was given over to the soldiers, he sat with his, his disciples and he took the bread and he broke the bread. And he said to them, this is my body. This is for you. So take this bread and eat this. Because he said, this is broken so that your sins will be forgiven. This is broken so that your relationship with God will be made whole. This is broken so that when you live in this world, you will know that I am with you and I will fight for you. The body of Christ. If you take your little wafer. And as we eat this, we'll take a little moment to pray and to just think of what God did for us. And we'll have a little bit of music to just, for a moment, focus ourselves, the body of Christ.
thank you for hearing, hearing our cry, Lord, and that you are the Lord of sea and sky. And when your children call, you listen and you help. And how did you listen, Lord, when you sent your son into this world? And you, Lord Jesus, you heard when the Father said, you need to do this. And you said, here I am, Lord. He said, I, Lord, I heard you calling. And you gave your life. And when you called, there was silence. When your body was broken, there was silence. So that we may know that our God is with us. And he will hear as we cry. Thank you for your body. Amen. After the meal, the Lord Jesus took the cup, the cup of thanksgiving. And he said, this is my blood. This is for you. So take this cup and drink, everyone. And as you take this cup and you drink, remember that his blood was shed for you as a perfect redemption of all of your sins. It's a perfect sacrifice for all of our brokenness. So take this cup and drink the body, uh, the blood, sorry, of Christ. And again, we're going to take a moment just to think about what this means and just listen to a little bit of music as we do that. Thank you for your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Blood that flowed from that cross over us and into our lives and, and cleansed us, Lord. Washed us brand new, white as snow, pure white as wool. Taking away all of that that stood between us and you. Thank you for this amazing gift that you give. Thank you that we could be at this table. Now, Lord, as we, we end this morning, we, we want to say thank you for giving your son into this world. Thank you for giving us life, life in all of its abundance. 
we receive, Lord, not because we deserve, because of your grace. And we saw your grace in action. So now we pray, and I invite you to pray with me, and the music can play, that's fine. As we pray together and we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from always my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life always my song. You are good.
So as you go into this world and you go live this week, God always makes another promise, and he makes that promise every week. That the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the closeness, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Amen.